This video will look at the sleeping parabola parent graph, which is very similar to our square root parent graph, but all we've done is added a plus or minus. So you have a plus or minus here, and so you have both the positive square root, which would be right here if you watch the square root video, and at the same time being graphed, you have y equals the negative square root. Now the thing is, this is actually two separate equations. There is no such thing as an operation of a positive negative. Right, so it's two, you have y equals a positive square root and y equals a negative square root. We just tend to combine them as a part of efficiency to make sure that we we're talking about the same thing without having to write a whole bunch of different equations all the time. So plus and minus is two separate equations. The locator point is still going to be hk. So you have your h and you have your k and that is going to be called the vertex again. And as we switch that or we uh, move that around so I can move it left and you can see that everything moves along with it. And you can move it right, and you can see everything moves along with that as well. And then you can move it up and down, and you can see what your sleeping parabola looks like. It's just a parabola on its side. That's why we call it that. You also have your A value. So as we take a look at the A value in the equation, as I stretch that A value up, you can see that as I move one unit to the right of your locator point, you move up three units, and therefore your A is equal to three. And even on Desmos Grapher, you can see that in order to create this graph, I had to, I didn't have a choice, I had to write it as y equals the positive and y equals the negative. Even on your graphing calculator, you will have to do that every single time. So that's why the graphing form is y equals the positive or negative a, and then the square root of x minus h, where x minus h is underneath the square root, and a plus k. So it's very similar to your square root, just your single square root, but you have both the positive and negative in there. Now this domain is also similar to our square root. You cannot do the square root of a negative number ever. So wherever your h value is, that will determine what your domain is because you can see it's restricted. I don't have anything to the left of that h value, but these graphs move on forever to the right of that a value. You keep on going both in the positive y and the negative y. So the domain is the same as the square root here, x is going to be greater than or equal to h. Again, or equal to is allowed because I can do the square root of 0, I just can't do the square root of anything negative. Different from the square root graph, our range, we have both the positive and the negative being graphed. So our range here is going to be all reals. It goes up forever and it goes down forever. If you wanted to use your inequality notate, notation, you would use negative infinity as less than y, which is less than positive infinity. Because I do have both the positive and the negative square root functions being graphed, I have both of them at the same time, so top and bottom. Now we do have a line of symmetry. That line of symmetry is going to be wherever your y value is, so wherever y equals k. So as I drag this graph up, you can see that you have that symmetry for the top and the bottom. There are no asymptotes here in this particular graph. We're not going towards one particular value. Because we are doing this as two separate equations, one key thing is that this is not a function, right? So it does not pass the vertical line test. You cannot use function notation to describe it, and you cannot write into your graphing calculator or into Desmos with just one single equation. It requires two. Now for Moodle, to make things more simple, we do use the plus and minus. So the notation or the syntax you're going to use for that is plus minus a, the square root symbol. Now you need the parentheses around x minus h again because you need to put all that stuff underneath the square root, and then you finish with the plus k. Again, we try to keep this as simple as possible. The only thing that needs the parentheses is the x minus h because that is all underneath this square root operation.